Suze King, aka Mr. Get Your Tank Top Ready. Today we're gonna do a shoe comparison with the Lost and Found one versus the 1995 Retro one. Stay tuned, we're gonna see the similarities and the differences. All right, one of the first things you notice with both of them is the height. The height is pretty much the same. And both of these shoes, by the way, are size 11. The height is about the same. Uh, something that did stick out to me in the uh, 95 Retro, it's like no padding here. Uh, in this Lost and Found, you actually have a little bit of padding here. The crazy part about it is the, the Lost and Found is all crinkly, as you see in age. And the 95 it hasn't even started with the crinkly and aging yet. So this is the back view of both of them together. Like I say, pretty similar. I think, you know, I don't know if it's through wear, but you know, the 95 pair looks a little, a little bit wider. You know, to keep in mind, this Lost and Found is brand new. You got another pair of side that's 25 years old. Uh, one key thing that I wanted what they put in here, um, they didn't put, if you notice here for the, uh, see they got the size 11 actually in the 95 retro. They didn't put that in the uh, lost and found. As you can see, they didn't put that anywhere in the lost and found. The one thing they did do with the lost and found, I do remember, is you see the lost and found has that Nike Air inside of it with the white. I don't have uh, the inserts back then. I would always take uh, inserts out of shoes and put them in different shoes. So I actually don't have that. I also uh, don't have the actual box that comes with this. What I did, because you gotta think about, that's a lot of traveling. That's a lot of living in different places over the last few years. And I, I then got rid of that actual box. And I'll actually show a picture of what the box looked like that came with this actual shoe. Right now, I actually have it. <laughs> Crazy enough, I have this shoe. Focus in a little bit. It's actually in the Jordan 22 box. Crazy enough, because it was a heavy duty box to be able to take the shoe, but yeah. Um, off the bat, this is nice. This is soft, actually, right here for the lost and found. It's a lot harder. A lot harder here on this 95. Like I said, it made this a little softer than, than this. The Nike checks feel, that leather actually feel pretty good on the 95. That, that, the leather actually feel pretty good here on the Nike check. Uh, pretty decent here too, you know. Pretty decent. The bottoms is what's gonna kill you. Tell me that that doesn't look similar. Like I say, for some reason, 95 just look a little bit wider, but they pretty much look mostly alike. The one thing I'll tell you that sticks out to me right now I'm looking at, look at the toe box difference. Look at look how wide the 95 is compared to the uh, lost and found. Toes, toes about the same, both of them are Thin cut, sleek looking toes. So, I mean, they did a good job with the actual loss and found. It's little small things along the way. Uh, the big thing I just noticed, if you see how it's like, it's embossed, debossed, or whatever they call it right now, this Aaron Jordan. You actually don't have that with the 95, it's just straight up. No emboss, no deboss. Um, Nike at the bottom, like I just showed. Nike, the, uh, both of them have the R sound. The tongues, crazy part about it. They did a good job aging the tongues. I want you guys to check these tongues out because look how my aged tongue look. They look that much similar. Of course, you know the 95 gonna look even 
darker looking, but look how similar they actually look. You know, it's no wear and tear on this Nike Air here. You can actually see the wear and tear actually on this Nike Air. Both of them actually with small details. If you look, you can see the R by the Nike, R by the Nike. Uh, both of them have it with the Air. Uh, the Air here is a lot thicker than the Air actually on the uh, 95. As you see, I'm gonna show you what the Air looks like on the 95. And this is what the air looks like on the lost and found. So, I mean, they did a they did a good. It was a good job, you know. They they made it look old, but the crazy part about it is they don't actually look like that. The retro, anyway. Probably the OGs have that crinkly and all that, but OGs actually don't look like that. Um, another uh, thing about this particular shoe, if I can actually get it to come out. Um, Probably not gonna be able to get it out. But it's actually a tag here on the inside. It's the tag is actually on the inside and it actually shows the shoe size. Um, they also have it here too. They have the tag here on the on the inside of this one right here. So yeah, I mean, good work, Joy and Brand. I mean, you did about it, you bought it close you can get, especially with the height. I mean, I would give a slight, when I say slight. I would give a slight edge to the lost and found, and I'm pretty sure that's only because of wear and tear. Um, you can tell it's, it's a lot more meat left on this one than it on this particular shoe. But all in all, they did a great job. I, watching both of them side by side really make, makes me appreciate the uh, 95 a lot more. You know, you don't appreciate things when, you, when you're young and you buy shoes, you pick them up because you're a shoe lover, you don't think, 20, 25 years later that the shoes are gonna be the go-to shoes and you know that everybody's gonna wanna have it. It's how crazy the shoe game goes and I'm glad I live to see that. Now for all of you people, uh, back in the days while I was laughing when we was talking about uh, shoes, uh, you know, getting crinkles and you know, uh, shoes they was talking about, they don't want them to crease. You, you see all those creases? You see all those creases? That's where that tie those crease, that's gonna help with real leather. The only reason why these shoes, uh, Jordan 1s are still around, for y'all who don't know it, is because, as you can see these bottoms, they're sewed, sewed, and sewn in. If it was just glue, they'd be falling apart like all the rest of them. And I think that's kinda like a little bit of the, the mystique with the Jordan 1, why people are attracted to it, because, it's the only shoe out of all the Jaws that will be able to last 30, 40 years and people can still wear them. You're not gonna wear a Jordan 2, you're not definitely wear a 3, 4, or 5 because of the elbows, but the shoe that sticks around, that stands the test of time is the actual Jordan 1. And that's been my comparison, that's pretty much it, uh, top to bottom. Uh, you know, it's if it was a it, it's a pretty good comparison. You know, one more time around for people who who want to know see the difference between the two. I mean, that lost and found looks real good, and the story about it is just phenomenal. Give you a clear uh, back view for some ones who might. There we go, and from the side. Cool. And I know some people probably going to ask, why he got fat laces in those uh, joy ones? You know, uh, back, in, back in the days, uh, people didn't want to look alike. Like, you would always see people do something different with their shoes to look different from everybody else, you know. Joy's were a popular shoe, and you do certain things, shoestrings or something, just to be able to have your pair stick out from all the rest. And that's it for my comparison of the two. But... Always remember over here, we keep the body tight, feet right later.